Hello friends, this video on cell, the unit of life part 22 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So that was all about plastids. Now we will start our discussion on another important part of a cell that is ribosomes. So by now we have discussed about all the important or noticeable cell organelles. So by this time you would have understood that why I was I talking about cell compartmentalization. So you see each compartment or each cell organelle performs a specific function. When you talk about mitochondria, they produce energy in the form of ATP molecules. When you talk about plastids, they impart color and they help in photosynthesis. When you talk about lysosomes, they help in digestion and digestive activity. Again, if you uh, talk about some other cell organelles, for example, the Golgi bodies, they help in packaging of the proteins which were produced in the endoplasmic reticulum. So each of them have got a specific job to do. Now, there are some small structures present everywhere called ribosomes, which help all these cell organelles. So it is something which is common for all of them. I mean, if ribosomes stop performing, all other cell organelles will not be able to do their job. So let us see what are ribosomes. So let us see what are ribosomes. These are tiny granular organelles without a membrane. So this is an example of a structure which is without a membrane. Now you would have seen that while we were talking about the end, rough endoplasmic reticulum or while we were talking about mitochondria, we always showed the small dotted structures, tiny structures as ribosomes. So actually they are very, very tiny. So here in this, you can see these small structures, they are ribosomes. They are the site for protein synthesis and that is what which make them so special because uh, every cell, every other cell organelle also need proteins but not all of them can make their own proteins except plastids and mitochondria. Others do not have ribosomes. So ribosomes prepare proteins, synthesize protein and then that prote those proteins are utilized by the rest of the cell. So they are found freely in the cytoplasm and they are also found attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. That is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. We spoke about it, right? The size of ribosomes can vary in prokaryotes and eukaryotes because these are present in prokaryotes as well. In fact, if you compare it, the, they are slightly bigger in eukaryotic cells than prokaryotic cells. They are co composed of RNA and proteins. They also contain the enzymes which are needed for synthesis of proteins. Now let us see where are they in the plant cells. So if you see, they are these small granules which are present in the plant cells. Again, when you look at the animal cells, so where do we see ribosomes? These are the free ribosomes. So present here, the dotted structures and also on the endoplasmic reticulum, you again see ribosomes, see on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now, when I talk about ribosomes, the size of ribosomes, as I said, it is slightly bigger in eukaryotic cells than in prokaryotic cells. So how do we measure? We know that the cell itself is so very tiny. The cell itself cannot be viewed by our naked eye. Now inside that cell, there are so many organelles which are obviously much, much smaller than the cell and the ribosomes being, the, being one of the most tiniest particle inside the cell is definitely very difficult to be observed. So how do we measure or how do we um, dis distinguish the size of ribosomes? So for that, we have the sedimentation coefficient. Now, what is sedimentation coefficient? It is basically a, a unit, you can say, to measure or to express the size of a very, very tiny particle. So what happens in this case is the process of centrifugation take place. Now, what is the centrifugation process? Just think of your uh, mixer grinder. What happens when you put a mixture of two things say x and y and then you grind it now because of the centrifugal force 
the two components might get separated I and mean, something like that something of that sort which rotates at a very high speed and the more dense components moves goes away from the axis and the less dense components remain towards the axis so it is something like this when it is rotating at a very high speed those which are more dense will get collected quite far whereas those which are less dense will get collected nearby so that is how you can separate the two particles in the mixture so that is the process of centrifugation so it makes use of the centrifugal force to separate components of a heterogeneous mixture so i'll not get into the process of centrifugation so depending upon the behavior of the sedimentation so the sediments which get collected as a result of centrifugation this sedimentation behavior a sedimentation coefficient is calculated using the velocity with which the particles get rotated and the acceleration and this sedimentation coefficient determines is how about the state size and shape of the tiny particle so it is denoted by capital S, which is the Swedberg unit. It is named after the scientist who uh, worked on it. So eukaryotic ribosomes are 80S and prokaryotic ribosomes are 70S. So you would have often seen this in your textbooks, 80S, 70S. So you might be wondering what is this S? So this S is nothing but sedimentation coefficient. So greater the value of uh, this uh, sedimentation coefficient, greater is the size of those ribosomes now the scientific the sedimentation coefficient is not always linearly related to the molecular weight it depends on the shape as well as size so there are so many factors molecular weight size shape considering everything the uh, sedimentation behavior during the process of centrifugation considering all those things this sedimentation coefficient is calculated so it is seen that eukaryotic ribosomes are 80s and prokaryotic are 70s. Now these 80s or 70s, they again consist of subunits. I mean, it is not just one ribosome which makes it. So there are two subunits which together make these. For example, the prokaryotic ribosomes may be 50s and 30s. There are two subunits. One is a bigger unit and the other one is a smaller unit. So they together form this. Now it is not necessary that 50s plus 30s should be 80s. But it, it doesn't add up like that. That is why I told that it the coefficient doesn't depend on the molecular weight directly. So you cannot numerically just sum it. It also depends on size and shape. So here in this picture, you can see a ribosome. Here you see two colored things. One is a violet color and the other one is a uh, light orange color so they represent the two subunits this is how the two subunits overlap with each other to form a ribosome so similarly this also uh, eukaryotic ribosomes also have a bigger subunit and a smaller subunit so this is about this is a brief information about the ribosomes now each ribosome is composed of subunits now let us quickly look at the significance of ribosomes. As I said, said, these are the site for protein synthesis. The proteins which are synthesized on the free uh, ribosomes, they get distributed randomly throughout the cytoplasm. Again, the proteins which are synthesized on the rough endoplasmic reticulum, what happens to them? From the rough endoplasmic reticulum, they go to the Golgi apparatus and there they get packaged and then they are transported by the uh, transport vesicles so protein synthesis is the main function of the ribosomes now that we have already discussed about most of the cell organelles let us quickly have a rough look on how everything gets handled inside the cell so these ribosomes also provide enzymes for protein synthesis. So let us quickly see how everything is managed inside the cell. Let us try to relate the function of each organelle with the other. As I mentioned before, that the control center of the cell is nucleus. So nucleus is the control center. So it regulates all the activities. Now inside the nucleus is present the genetic material, say DNA. 
So what will this DNA do? This DNA will send message, message in the, I mean, right now I'm just writing it in very simple terms for you to understand with the exact processes which take place that we will study in our later chapters gradually. So DNA sends the message, the genetic information which it has, that message is sent to the cytoplasm. That is, it is sent outside the nucleus. How that happens? A process of transcription takes place and messenger RNA is formed inside. And then this information is sent out of the nucleus through the nuclear pores. We were talking about nuclear pores, right? And then it is sent to the cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm, there are ribosomes which are freely located. So ribosomes will, what they will do? Ribosomes will build proteins. Now through the nuclear pores, one more thing to mention and it not only goes to cytoplasm but it also goes to rough endoplasmic reticulum. So in both the places you have ribosomes. So ribosomes will build proteins making use of the information which was sent by DNA. So what will it do? It will make use of the messenger RNA. So here messenger RNA was sent in the form of information. So messenger RNA gets translated to proteins. So here the process of translation takes place and then what happens this proteins are formed in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So from the rough endoplasmic reticulum it is sent to the Golgi apparatus for packaging. So here packaging will take place within the Golgi apparatus some modification can also take place to the proteins and then the Golgi apparatus will pack them into transport vesicles. And those transport vesicles, what they'll do, they'll carry them to their respective, carry them to respective locations. So what can be those respective locations? For example, um, they can be vacuoles, they can be the lysosomes, I mean, whichever thing has to go to whichever place they'll reach there. So this is how the entire thing happens. Now these processes of transcription and translation, we will talk about them in our later chapters because they are not that simple concepts. They are quite complex. So we need to spend time on them. So I do not want to complicate things now. Now you just need to know about the different cell organelles. And I think this is enough information for now. When we will talk about the cell division part, how cell divides, how cell reproduce, that time we will talk about all these processes in detail. Okay, so with this I think we have discussed enough about ribosomes. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.